Thousands showed up for this special march and service to a man who is revered by most Salvadorans as a martyred saint. Shortly before he was killed at the altar, Romero spoke the words that may have cost him his life. In the name of God and his suffering people, stop the repression, he implored. He urged soldiers to disobey orders that ran contrary to the word of God. He was enormously popular, and he was shot to death. No one has been brought to justice. In the song, they sing that they could kill the man, but not his message. Romero's successor, Archbishop Rivera Damas, agrees. He repeated Romero's plea to the United States not to send more weapons to Central America. He also urged that no one try to make Romero a political figure, which leftists here have. And he prayed, as Romero did, for an end to violence here. The prayer for peace came too late for retired Salvadoran General Alberto Medrano. Medrano was assassinated on Saturday. This is his funeral. Medrano was a war hero, but also the man who founded Orden, a group blamed for many of the right-wing death squad murders in this country. The left-wing group, believed responsible for the assassination, has promised more of the same before this week's elections here. Lee Green, CNN, Santa Tecla, El Salvador. President Duarte's party has as its symbol the fish, and schools of fish turned out for him. It was billed as the biggest political rally in El Salvador's history. That may be stretching the point, but the turnout of Christian Democrats was impressive. The party's stars were out in force, except President Duarte himself, who is forbidden as chief executive from campaigning. The thousands who crammed into Plaza Libertad in San Salvador were whipped to a fever pitch by a succession of speakers. The selection is vital to President Duarte. His Christian Democrats hold the largest single block of seats in the National Assembly, but a right-wing coalition has a majority. President Duarte has delivered some parts of his promises. He has met the guerrillas in La Palma. A human rights report commented favorably on declining death squad murders here, but left and right are still at violent odds, and on his promised agrarian reform, Duarte has been defeated. He has vetoed bills, only to have his vetoes overruled. This is the man who may make of Duarte a lame duck president. Arena party leader Roberto Dobison controls the intricate right-wing coalition which currently dominates the Salvadoran assembly. Dobison appears to be feeling the stress of left-wing death threats against him. He is armed blatantly these days and at one point urged newsmen to keep their distance because he said his life is in danger. When Salvadorans go to the polls on Sunday, they will also be electing municipal leaders, important local bases for the parties. Most observers agree the election will be close, but the Christian Democrats are oozing confidence. Their fish symbol has lately become a shark, seen here eating the coalition of the right. Lee Green, CNN, San Salvador. The town of Tehudapeque bounces back and forth between the rebels and the army like a ping pong ball. Two weeks ago, the army was here. Today, it's the guerrillas. The two sides leave messages to each other. This one from a soldier asked the guerrillas to stop terrorist activities. This one is a guerrilla favorite. Elections, no. Dialogue, yes. A group of President Duarte's Christian Democratic Party campaign workers was allowed through the town. In the past, the guerrillas have stopped Tehudapeque from voting. This time, they say they will permit the vote, although they still say the elections are a farce. We believed that the elections in this country were some form of solution, but the parties at this moment who are participating in these elections don't represent any kind of alternative for the people. The guerrilla troops in this town were young. Several were women. One in particular seemed a little young to be a political activist. And what is he fighting for? Y para qué andas luchando? All the shock and what? Para liberar nuestro pueblo. To liberate our people. Jose has been a guerrilla for less than a year. He says his mother doesn't mind. He's almost 12. The townsfolk say that neither the guerrillas nor the army molest them, and all said they expected to vote on Sunday. The guerrillas have taken to fragmenting into smaller bands, according to one because of army helicopter patrols. The smaller groups make it more difficult to mount large operations, but the guerrillas still have effect. The recent bombing of an army trench and the town hall were proudly pointed out. They are well equipped. This U.S. uniform was captured from a Salvadoran officer killed in battle, according to its present owner. 
While in town, briefly, the gorillas buy the little treats they seldom get to enjoy in the revolutionary route they've chosen, and then leave, off to continue their long and bloody war with the Salvadoran army. Lee Green, CNN, Tehutepeque, El Salvador. In the days leading up to Sunday's elections for the National Assembly here, the Salvadoran army is much in evidence, keeping highways open, mounting sweeps of guerrilla-held territories, even ferrying electoral officials about. It is, in the opinion of one army commander, a sign of new times for the army. We believe that we cannot go back to military dictatorships or civilian dictatorships, but we don't want to fall into a Marxist totalitarianism either. So that we believe the best system is democracy with its defects and its errors, but it is at least democracy. The army is dealing in this election with a confused guerrilla policy. We were assured by one group of guerrillas that the election would not be interfered with. But the guerrillas have set off a series of bombs in town halls where electoral records are kept. It is not a strategy which is winning them much sympathy. Life here in, here in Tohutla is a life of suffering. At night, the people don't sleep quietly. If you ask every person, we'd like to have a, make a snake to bite them. These farmers in Tehutla are hurting. They say the guerrillas take their cattle and that it's costing them. They plan to petition the government for help. Most people in this town want to vote, but are not sure they can. Mostly, they want an end to the violence. Lee Green, CNN, Tehutla near Chalatenango, El Salvador. Most Salvadorans were keeping two appointments this Palm Sunday, one with the church and one with the ballot box, electing municipal and national representatives in a vote that will determine El Salvador's progress in the coming years. President Duarte's Christian Democrats currently have the largest block of seats in the assembly, but a right-wing coalition has the majority. At issue is whether or not Duarte can begin to govern effectively. It was, for the most part, a quiet day by Salvadoran standards. These troops say they had a brief skirmish with guerrillas in the morning, but the polls opened on time in the town nearby, and a strong turnout was reported there. Leading to the elections, the guerrillas blew up a number of town halls where election records are kept and power lines were cut in countless places. Workmen struggled to replace them. But guerrilla orders to stay off the roads were mostly ignored as people marched miles to vote. In the capital, San Salvador, the voting went smoothly under the watchful gaze of scrutineers from both sides. It is going very good, you know very well. The people is coming here from about um, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning when the votation starts. The people was here already. We have more people last year. Why is that? Are people not interested? No, I think they already get bored. Because they come and vote, they tell them something, and they don't do it. You know what I mean. El Salvador's troubles will not end with this vote, but the fact that elections take place at all in this hostile atmosphere is something of a miracle in itself. The army appears to have succeeded in its goal of ensuring an open and democratic vote, the result of which most people here hope will be peace. The Green CNN El Salvador. In the end, it was almost peaceful and practically correct. A lot of people didn't get to vote at all, victims of a new system that didn't acknowledge them. But most observers found it open, fair, and democratic. The delegation commends the great strides made in this nation. Nowhere are they more evident than in this election. The Christian Democrats say they won, convincingly. Their figures, normally reliable, show them trouncing the right-wing Arena PCN coalition in 12 of 14 provinces, picking up 33 of 60 seats in the National Assembly and gaining the mandate they require. We are going to call all the other parties because the national problems are very big, very important, and I think uh, it is uh, necessary to open our arms to to receive everybody, to talk to everybody in order to solve the big problems, the national problems of this country. 
The Arena Party, which waged a weak campaign, has not conceded defeat, but there are rumors of a split within Major Roberto Dobison's party. Ambassador Thomas Pickering had a word of advice for Arena. It would be a negation of their own future democratic hopes if they were not to respect the democratic system. The way is now clear, say the Christian Democrats, to continue the dialogue they hope will bring leftist rebels into this country's political mainstream and to continue the process of redistributing the country's land to its people. So unofficially, at least, President Duarte is no longer a lame duck president. He has the seats he needs in this building, El Salvador's National Assembly, to govern effectively. President Duarte may find he preferred being a lame duck. Much is expected of him, and he still faces formidable opposition from this country's powerful left and right wings. This election offers great hope, but an equally grave risk of disappointment. Lee Green, CNN, San Salvador. Thank you.